and all that um, music videos and that comedy skits that you just watched and of course that throwback video uh, all products of one man multi-talented he does a lot of things uh, brings creativity to life and do not forget that this is star corner and the reason alone for this segment is to give creatives artists you know whoever you are in the creative industry whatever it is that you do we give you the opportunity to come and talk about your craft what you do how you do it and why you do it and for that reason we have Kofi the guru in the house good morning You're good welcome. morning thank you so much mm. you, you look magnificent hi chineke I, I said it earlier this shirt goes on with me which one can we go house you know we'll, we'll sort it out <laughs> there's a boutique right next door you, oh, really? in, you look resplendent thank you yeah thank you very much okay let's meet uh Kofi the guru oh, give okay. us uh tell us about yourself Kofi the guru. Mm -hmm. Man. What, what about the man? <laughs> Male, tribal max, short, uh, from Lagos, mm. married, three kids, mm. father of his own children, no DNA needed. Oh, really? Because um, it look like you, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, thespian, actor, singer, comedian, writer, author, producer, director, author, mm. two books, yeah. Producer of. Um, about 30 movies without a loan i have about 31 music albums um chemists studied chemistry in school but i've always been an intellect and creative since forever mm. what else i eat twice a day <laughs> <laughs> in this uh, and uh, i'm also buying foil at 607. <laughs> 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 I think that I think uh -huh. that goes for all of us now. I am also facing the same shaggy. I'm like you. <laughs> yeah. So basically, I'm simple natured. Um, I'm just a jolly good fella. Mm. Um, all right. Uh, something strikes. Yeah. The name Papi Patron. Papi Patron. Oh, okay. Sorry, I read that in English. <laughs> I'm Papi just Patron. realizing it's French. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Papi Patron. Patron. Uh, and you're bilingual as well. I yeah, mean, my mom. I should just call you multilingual. I'm a polyglot. Oh, okay. That is, I, I, I express myself in several ways and languages. I mm. speak, um, I'm a man of every part, you know. I was born and raised in Lagos, but my mom is from Togo. Mm. I schooled in Ijebuibu. I spent some time in Ibadan. I served in Jos. I have Calabar friends, you know, so sometimes I want to do like, I want to talk like my Calabar people. And so I'm just, I play around a lot. So, mm. um, Papi Patron means um, the big boss. That's a, a Togolese expression, a French expression. So I just recently finished work on two albums. I usually like to release double albums. So one is called Area Boy Blues and then Papi Patron. The Papi Patron is a Togolese album for my Togolese fans and family. So that's where the song comes from, Papi Patron. It's uh, Afrobeat, um, swing, into modern sukus. So yeah. that's, that's the meaning of Papi so, Patron. So, how, so how, what inspired you to pick that, you know? Uh, I, I went to Togo as a kid at first in, I think, 1984, five. Then in 2012, when my grandma died, and then in the process, I went around town. And everywhere, I just said, patron, 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 patron. Mm. And then when we got back home, it was 2013, when we got back home, two days later, I went to the studio. And I did the first version of, this is not the first version, I did Papi Patron. My uncle heard it and was like, hey, young man, we just got back from home. How did you just, you know? <laughs> It was more Marco Saish, the mm. first, but now we're in Afrobeat, so you have to, so. It was just um, trying, I was trying to, if you can understand what I'm saying in the music, I was trying to place my grandfather's environment on the map. My grandfather came all the way from a place called Zoti in Togo to Lagos. So the sojourn that brought about Kofi that guru. I was trying to take people back to where the journey started from. Mm -hmm. If that man had not left that small hamlet in Togo, I probably wouldn't be who I am today. So it was more or less like giving credit and thanks to the man. And he is actually the original Papi Patron. Mm. So I'm just taking it further. So I was placing everything about my experience from Togo on the track. And the entire album also captures a lot of those essences trying to 
reorientate a lot of the young urban Togolese people here who don't even know or connect in any way with the Togo back home. But they wish they could. So with the album, they can connect. When they hear some things, they're like, okay, okay, I probably want to go check it out. And we do have a lot of them here, actually. A lot. There's mm. a huge population of second, third generation Togolese who have never been back home or who have gone, but they cannot, they are not so proud to come out and showcase it. I am not Togolese, but I was brought up with the mannerisms, the culture as mm. well. So I identify totally with it, but I have never totally come all out with it. But this is the first time I want to show that, okay, there's a part of me you don't know. And as I go on my journey, I'd like to showcase, there was an event where I was emceeing and I was speaking in Jebu all through and the crowd were like, for real? And I'm like, um, yeah, whatever that is. Uh, yeah, so, <laughs> you know, there are parts of me that you don't see. And mm. as, as we go, let's start. So I'm now showing you some other parts. Then later again, I'll show you some other parts. Uh, so that's for me. It's a progressive journey. All right. So you did mention that. Uh, I think one thing that has become very clear is how very, um, how many dimensions that you have. Beautiful, actually. Uh, but you did mention that you went to school and you studied chemistry. Chemistry. As in, chemistry. Uh, to, be, to, be, to be honest, um, <laughs> myself, I don't know. Mm. <laughs> but now I'm, I'm doing chemistry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chem comedy plus chem yes, uh. <laughs> I wanted to study pharmacy, but I didn't do well in jam. Okay. I, I don't like that thing that people say oh, they can't give me. No, they didn't give me. I didn't do well. Mm. And I mean, no, do well. Okay, so well, they actually, now gave me the option of chemistry. Where I was going with that question is, you studied chemistry. Uh, a lot of parents, I, I'm sure your parents were very proud. I mean, our son did study chemistry. It's like one of those things that every parent wants their child to be a part of. However, you are very far away from the lab. Very, you very, are in very, the studios, in the streets, very, behind the cameras. The studio is my lab. Doing stuff. Did you always know that that was what you wanted to do even though you were in school pursuing something else all i wanted to be in life was a family man mm. i didn't know how i was going to get there okay i wanted pharmacy because my aunt died when i was in jss3 so when i was going to go to ss1 they asked what do you want to be i said i want to make medicines to make people well mm. i didn't know that i was going to end up doing that through comedy make people feel good i didn't know mm. but on the way i got to university of lagos got admission for chemistry. But as a clown that I was, a friend now <laughs> advised me to join Theater 15 to go and, you know, develop my craft more. So I started studying to be a stage actor. And from that, they started seeing all these elements of the yeah, yeah guy. And then from that, the music came. From that, everything that I come in, the writing came. Everything was just coming along, just like Ashake was doing this and then became this and then became this. So that's the journey. I didn't know where I was going to end up. As a matter of fact, I didn't want to be on television. I never wanted to be famous. I don't like fame till tomorrow. I don't want to be seen. I'm an introvert. I'm always the guy behind the scenes, indoors, creatively putting things together. In fact, my first stage play that I wrote and produced, me, the owner of the play, I didn't star in it. Wow. It was, I, you know, I didn't appear in it. <laughs> um, it was, it's, um, it's my own, but I did not. Yeah. I just wanted to be putting the things together. I'm that creative. So, when I saw the opportunity to be on television the first time, I ran away like three times until my girlfriend was like, okay, okay, let's, they are your friends, I, I'm grateful, I just go and do it. And then I did the very first one and it blew up. Then the music too, let's just have fun with it. I just went to the studio with someone. And then the guy said, I can do it for you. Let's do it. And then we went to play in the studio. And then I played with it. Little Mermaid song, sha la 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 ma, you go and kiss the girl. I changed it to Mumu, sha la la la, they don't teeth your girl. And then it came out and everybody was like, oh, wow. And then I said, okay, let's go and play with Waro. Waro is ethnic Yoruba sound. Mm. I had this idea, I saw two guys fighting. I said, I went to the studio, I was just having fun. And it blew up. Today I see people complaining, no, guys, no. It was not intentional. It, it just it <laughs> happened. You do not plan out. It doesn't mean that you should now <laughs> say, okay, is a demand. This must be my yeah. life. No, I'm still on the part of my life. Simple, quiet, living his life, paying his bills, taking care of family. Mm -hmm. So I didn't plan any of this. And I still don't plan what is to come. I will just wake up tomorrow. Whatever happens, happens. Mm. To be honest, this interview said I didn't want to come. <laughs> I'm serious. I, interviews after a while, I stopped going. 
award shows i stopped going i, I you don't see me every, we know they see him thank you i don't want to be seen because mm. i like that simple quiet like if god has blessed you know your blessings and stay to it it's not until you're all over the place trying to prove to people that you're doing well that you're actually doing well mm -hmm. so sometimes we we think it is when we're all over the place that's why some people end up in trouble and i don't like trouble <laughs> like you know so chemistry was not planned being an entertainer was not planned being popular fame every nothing was planned it was just god saying this is the path you have mm -hmm. to go through this path to get to the marketplace and i keep going every day i started with one movie as we speak on monday we're back on set shooting movie number 30. Mm. as in none of it was planned it was just as you wake up go with it as you wake up go with it as you wake up. i don't even know what i'm going to do tomorrow as a creative if tomorrow ai decides to say okay we're taking over you take me <laughs> <laughs> you know, whatever let me just go with life all right but then you keep carving out you know um your own your own stuff i i'm talking about how that you have party patron it is your thing and you yeah. you you, you yes, cut yes. out that niche for yourself yes, yes you also yes. have a spluffix 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 what yeah. does it mean <laughs> branding <laughs> oh i'm on i, I brand tv okay <laughs> this is one of um this is also me guru, guru. this is my merchandise yeah. okay oh. spluffix is um a word i created in 2010 a lot of people across the globe don't know I own the brand. I just allow them to enjoy it. Mm. They don't know I own it. I have it, you know. So it's a, a one word to express a lot of things. Splendid, unique, fantastic, you know. It's so for finesse, endearment. Hey, you look spluffic. Mm. Oh, this shoe is spluffic, you know. I'm going to have a spluffic day. One word to just cover up a lot of expressions. Positivities. Yes. Good vibe. I, yeah. We started good vibe before good vibe, you know. So <laughs> for me, it's... It was just a coincidence. Like I said, everything is as it comes. I was signing the register at a particular TV station. And when you get to the comment section, they say, okay, how was the show? And I was looking for something to write. And Spluffing just came. Then when I got home, I now defined it. And then me and the group then, Walkerman Movement, we now created music out of it, created oh. brands out of it. We had our fashion line, and then it became a movement. I went on Facebook. I could not own Spluffic. I went on Instagram. I could not own it. The world took it away from me. Wow. In fact, there was a time I reached out to everybody using Spluffic. Said, okay, let's all come under one umbrella because I had now created Spluffic World. But most of the people didn't understand that it was the owner was that yours. was talking to yeah. them. It was only one guy, Spluffic TV on Instagram, that would always relate to me. Well, thanks for allowing me to use it, blah, blah. And he's still using it. He's making money. I'm okay. I'm cool. You know, I'm doing well in my own way. I shouldn't choke you. But what we now took to doing with Spluffic World is make an umbrella body where we can now merchandise, mm. promote products, um, teach. We will have Spluffic Academy on Telegram for young people. By next year, we're going to fully go into that so that we can inspire and push young people in the mm. right direction. Take care of mental health. That's why lately I'm focusing on mental health humor. I want to be a mental health humorist, specialize in that area. Not okay. I'm focusing on jokes and materials that helps decrease the tension not just trying to earn a living but mm. impact people more you know young people especially because we're seeing what is happening with the colos on colos with the derogatory mindset on social media yeah. it's becoming more and more toxic um, a lot of sensible people are pulling away from commenting on social media because of the way ignorant people attack their opinions and we need to tone down on that because on the global space uh, global levels we can no longer relate well because our young people cannot even write correctly they cannot have commonplace conversations without being derogatory you see comments on social media people abusing their future destiny helpers without even knowing sure. you know you see business owners using their business handles to attack opinions on social media. These are areas where we need to start orientating people. Say, look, there's a future beyond these iPads mm -hmm. and this your your keypads. You need to have some culture and courtesy in conversation in a 3D world where you you know you don't even know don't the, even in the, the virtual space, you don't even is, know yeah. who that person True. at the other end is. Mm -hmm. And then you are abusing them, you are using a private account to comment on issues. If you are private, then stay private. <laughs> you don't belong in this conversation space. So we need a lot of 
reorientation and repackaging. So, me you, know, you know, that was going to drive my next question, and that is the fact that you started in this industry when men would irk out whatever they earned, whatever they had at the yeah. time. I mean, there were no streaming farms, yeah. there were no streaming platforms, you were legit. there was no yeah. social yeah. media. If you made comedy, you would sweat to have Organic. people put you on stage. Or Organic. Have, you know, people have you um, perform at their shows and all. Everything that you did was serious hard work. And we have young men today who talented, you know, in all fairness to them, but they don't give out same quality. They don't give out same, you know, um, yeah. um, what's the word I'm looking for now? The professionalism is not there. Even yeah. though we're in the creative world, but there is a business end to things. And yeah. unfortunately, we don't see a lot of understanding of that end of the conversation, yeah. especially in the entertainment, right. in the creative industry of today. How, how you know, as an Egbo in this industry right now, would <sighs> you address that? And what would you say to the young person who is trying to, you know, um, look up to you and do something good and positive for themselves? In I, this I don't really need to address it to my colleagues in that space. Mm. Because the major players and the major benefactors and progenitors are a larger society who do not respect the value that you have brought to the table but decide to turn off. This is the only uh, environment I know that the higher you go in your professional life, the more worthless and valueless you become. Yes, as you advance, they don't consider you valuable enough. You see brands making somebody who just had a certain number of followership an ambassador. They don't look at the value you have gathered over time to mm. say, ah, okay, let's make this guy an ambassador to show that he's tested and trusted over time. Because even their own brand too is ephemeral. Mm -hmm. So most times, ephemeral moves with ephemeral. If you check some of these guys you're talking about, they blow up one, two, three years, they're gone. And then for me, when I go to certain events, high-end events, you would hear conversations like, ah, we wanted this guy, but we need a matured anchor we need a mature person who can understand the dynamics of the event so most of them come and then they flash and go they are working with the time they are in it's a time mm. capsule and you cannot bust that bubble you just let it be you cannot insist on this assignment because if truly i'm bringing my advice to the table mm. they will say why is it not working for you like it's working for us not knowing that my generation Things like this way. I'm, I'm even adapting into your generation. You wouldn't have survived in my generation. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. exactly. You, you wouldn't have because I came with originality. Mm. You, you're just adapting norms and forms of what you're seeing now, now, now. One comedian does, or one skit, one skitter does a particular skit. Several others will use that same pattern to do several versions of it. Back in the day, I told my joke. Ali would tell his joke. Basket would tell his joke. Didon would tell his joke. Owen would tell his joke. Teddy would tell his joke. Jedi. Everybody came with their own. Princess would tell her own. Like everybody would come with, on the same subject matter of foil. They would tell their different versions of it. Nowadays, the stand-up comedians, some are still doing very well. But the content they also bring to the marketplace has been questioned. People mm. are, you know, be like when them Kofi, they do comedy. But you guys chose to patronize them more because you think they're giving you the value you want. Then you come back to complain. No, don't complain. Don't complain. You are the ones marketing it. Mm -hmm. It is what you continue to sell that will sell. If you don't sell it, it won't sell. So don't complain that. Uh, is, mm -mm. If you want to see value, keep pushing out value. Keep Go to Yankee. You can never place Drake above Buster Rhymes. Mm -hmm. I was having that conversation with Ashley earlier. I said, look, we have a society that knows that, okay, this is value. This is new. You cannot say new is better than value. New would have to get to the point where value is coming from. So there's a process. There's a machine. Because this is how they qualify it. If Buster Rhymes was in your generation, he would have done more numbers than you are doing right now. Mm -hmm. If we take you back to the days of Buster Rhymes, you would never have made the numbers that Buster Rhymes made organically. But Nigeria doesn't do that balance. They just see somebody trending. Then they look at an old-time artist that has put a lot that People actually works. created the foundation mm -hmm. and they are this one no rain again no you see you have to go back to when you heard that person's music the first time and recall the joy they gave you mm -hmm. if you remember that joy that's what you should value remember when you heard their song the first time Sha, 
Come on. How, how old were you? How did you feel? Are you having that same feeling now? The content in the music. In actually. the content. Mm. And then if you check how their lyrics valued women then compared to how their lyrics wants to chop women now, is it the same? Does it balance? Where are the valuable things they are talking about now? It's not there. The music has been dumped down. It's now trap, not rap. That means you are in a trap. So what are you qualifying? So it means even you, your taste has fallen. Mm -hmm. That's why you are valuing this more than you used to value. It means you have gone down. So you need to reevaluate yourself. You check most of the people that engage me are people who are on that level of hmm, we know what is what. You know, I, I know if you just you know, but most the volume of people out there who um, have that understanding. Yeah, you know, it's about a larger society and you can't mm. help it. Now let's talk about still talking about your career. Um, there's this interview I read about you when you said uh, concerning comedy that you never had a mentor. No, no, no. No, I never did. I think you said something like that, that you grew up with friends. Yeah. And that was how you started cracking jokes with them. Yeah. And then you became a brand within your neighborhood. Yes, yes. Now, I want to ask, how were you able, you know, to really fashion yourself in this career that you've picked for yourself mm. when it's not even the norm when you want to do comedy you just have to be mentored yeah. either in a formal setting or an informal setting so talk um, to us about that truth be told as at the time we started out there was nothing really about mentorship mm. it was um, maybe followership okay. you would just see that everyone just you are doing your thing and he's giving you the opportunities to excel and uh, now mentorship is redefined so at that time i didn't even know comedians were called comedians i didn't know what it was <laughs> i'm not lying i'm telling you the first time i went to night of a thousand life it was my girlfriend now my wife that said go go so that they can know that you are good and out of 34 auditioners i was the only one who qualified that they had never seen or known before out of 34 were four people that qualified so for me at that time I didn't know Ali Baba like that. I only just saw Tom, Dick and Ali on AIT at some point. But I wasn't close. I, I didn't... The only person I really associated with on that level was Ben Gadeboe, on the ethnic level. Mm. So I would listen to his song, I would listen to his humor. That was what I knew. I didn't know the English side of things as comedian. So it was when I had got into the industry that I knew that we were called comedians. <laughs> oh, 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 somebody who does comedy is called a comedian. Oh, oh okay, I get it now. So I, I didn't have that privilege. But I had the privilege of association. And that's how we worked then. Once you brought your foot out and you said you could do it, somebody vouches for you. Somebody would have to vote for you and go and tell the person, yeah, this my guy is crazy, we'll give him space. Yeah. And then you now got the space and proved yourself. That person would now automatically certify you with other comedians. That, ah, this guy, they crazy. And that's the terminology for good in our space. And once every other comedian identifies with you, then you're on the path. That's how you used to work. Not now that you can use a phone to prove yourself to a wider audience beyond the comedy circle. And the audience now decides your future. Back then, it was your colleagues that would decide whether or not you should come on the journey with them. Mm. So it was my colleagues that would now say, ah, Kofi, get one show away, they happen for this thing next week. Then you turn up because there were no phones. There was no, you know, so it's by word of mouth. And then once you're doing a show, every other person will gather. Everybody's show was like a gathering point. So if you are having a show, I'll just see you there. Hey, my guy. So everybody would socialize. Then from there, we'll know the next one where we'll meet. And that's how we kept going and then started building up the industry until much later when we now knew that okay come when i see a guy that i see okay has some thing to bring to the table i hold him by the hand take him along to everywhere i went to let him watch me let him learn the ropes how but that has also deteriorated as well because mm. the people who held by the hand and showed them how to master it they stopped holding anybody's hands so there's a gap there's a breakdown as well mm. All right. Uh, okay, you please go ahead. All right. So um, let me just uh, quickly ask you again, because I understand that um, the Nigerian uh, comedy style is usually being delivered uh, and, and, and more enjoyed in Pidgin English, if, yeah. you, if you could attest to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to you, I know you prefer doing yours in the urban English style. <laughs> 
<laughs> which might really not be so so easy for you to get in you know because there are some jokes you cannot really tell in um, you know english format you must go down you yeah. know what i'm saying so how were you able to deal with that for you as a brand? Uh, that's why i said earlier that i'm a polyglot okay. i deliver in all areas possible i could um I work with I think I'm about the let me not be proud or arrogant about it uh, but bragging rights I think I'm the only entertainer in Nigeria who can deliver on all those levels on the very corporate elite level mm. on the social level on the very grassroots level uh, being I can deliver in the Yoruba way and also English elite urban but I think I'm the only person who can really do grassroots, grassroots mm. with ethnic Yoruba. And then I can do Togolese AV with a bite of French. So I am able to blend with the audience that I find myself. But what, what most people don't know is that I'm very, very on the corporate level. Like, mm. you know, you know, <laughs> wow. corporate elitist level then social level <laughs> so um quickly before we let you go i have a lot of questions i'm hoping that i would have you again on this show oh so yeah, have yeah to, definitely but you know you mentioned something that struck with me and uh just before i let you go i'd like for you to address that it is something that has um that you know we've, that have been pointed out if i'm to use that word in the creative space i'm talking about musicians comedians artists people no longer hold people's hands and you wouldn't blame anybody who decides not to hold hands anymore because we live in a generation where people are grossly ungrateful yeah grossly uh, I, disrespectful I and you mentioned derogatory while you were talking earlier so uh it's 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 a mix of a lot of misunderstanding and ignorance as well yeah how do we begin to solve this matter now you see we need to read excuse me forgive me you know there's a terminology that's been going around mm. on learn and relearn so we really need to do that on a several lot of levels in our mm. society we need to teach people the art of gratitude we need to teach people the art of discipleship the art of um, passing on the torch understanding the mental health issues that we're having today is because a lot of people young people come into the world with a lot of high hopes and expectations mm. and then those hopes get dashed and they, then they go into mental depression do you know that in all our years growing up we didn't know about depression i personally didn't know depression as a human emotion but a mathematical expression mm. angles of elevation and depression. and depression i didn't know it as a human emotion because my parents did not did not show depression my aunties my uncles i didn't see depression but nowadays the world is all over the place even kids are now saying i'm feeling depressed so we need to let young people understand the dynamics of life, the vicissitudes, how life goes up and down. It cannot be one parallel plane, sweet life. Things have to go topsy-turvy. Mm. So those lessons will make people understand the need to always have cushion effects, uh, people as backbones. Nowadays, you see very toxic statements online about my ex this, my ex that. I don't understand this narrative about exes being evil people. Am I, mm. What did your ex do? All this now, a lot of blogging sites always just make your exes look terrible. But when your ex was initially in your life, they made your life beautiful. Has every good thing they did suddenly gone down the drain? Mm -hmm. Can't you learn to take the good parts and understand that the bad parts are just a human nature of their own deficiencies that you could not help them correct? And you were not capable to help with and you did have your own as well and you had your own now mm. if you are saying all their bads and they're also saying all your bads we're not going to have a balanced society we had a society that understood these balances forgave moved on men fences that's why we have cousins that we can't explain how they became our cousins sure that's why we have relatives that we don't really know who they are only to find out years later when the parents have died to know that oh the parents were just friends in school mm -hmm. but they adopted families and made them families so this young generation does not know all those things so somebody has to go back to social studies moral instructions all those studies that we had in primary school our curriculum vitae needs to change mm. the basic elements of teaching needs to ch change it, it, it's not enough to teach our young people oibo values and standards but teach them the moral things i was explaining to my friend just now i said look 
philosophy and logic should have been taught from GSS3. So that by the time you get to SS3, even if you decide not to further your education in the university, you would understand philosophy and logic. But I didn't get to learn philosophy and logic until my year one in the higher institution, which is very wrong. So that's why you see a lot of people who just maybe, ideally, GSS3 is enough for you to study. Sure. But after GSS3, you don't need to go to higher education, which is college. You don't need it. Abroad, they get to GSS3 and they're good for life. It's, a, it's hmm. a choice to go to college abroad than to now talk of university. So the way they now make people who go to GSS3 here feel like they are not doing well in life is because you did not teach them well to that point. The basics. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, this is, uh, I just, I have to let you go before people just <laughs> come and show me out as well. <laughs> but thank you so much. Thank Ricky. you. Thank uh, you. People would want to reach out to you, collaborations. Yeah. How would people find you on social media? Okay. Uh, at Kofi the Guru, very simple. K-O-F-I-T-H-A-G-U-R-U. Uh, LinkedIn, same thing. Facebook. I, I'm not so good with uh, the snaps, the uh, TikTok and the likes. I'm on Thread, same thing. Um, but most importantly, www.kofidaguru.com. There's a lot of engagement on my website. Yeah. And we're starting a new series, um, which is Open Letters with Kofi the Guru, where you, you can write us, tell us whatever it is you're going through, so long as it's not political or religious. And then on my back end, when we now shoot it, we'll read your letters out to people and then provide solutions to whatever you're going through in the comment section. Mm. Those are the ways to engage in mental health right. so that we can also get to my website or follow me at Kofi the Guru on Instagram and then we'll keep going on the journey. Thank you so much, Kofi, Thank you. for coming Thank on you. the show Thank today. You. We appreciate Thank you. your time. All right, go ahead, cop the man. He is on at Kofi the Guru on social media and go to kofitheguru.com and write your letters. You might just be picked. <laughs> I want daybreak. When we return, another star will be shining with us. Don't go anywhere. Stay with us.